The grammar of standard Chinese shares many features with other varieties of Chinese, the language almost entirely lacks inflection, so that words typically have only one grammatical form. Categories such as number, singular or plural, and verb tense are frequently not expressed by any grammatical means, although there are several particles that serve to express verbal aspect, and to some extent mood. The basic word order is subject-verb-object, SVO, as in English. Otherwise, Chinese is chiefly a head-last language, meaning that modifiers precede the words they modify, in a noun phrase, for example, the head noun comes last, and all modifiers, including relative clauses, come in front of it. This phenomenon is more typically found in SOV languages like Turkish and Japanese. Chinese frequently uses serial verb constructions, which involve two or more verbs or verb phrases in sequence. Chinese prepositions behave similarly to serialized verbs in some respects, several of the common prepositions can also be used as full verbs, and they are often referred to as coverbs. There are also location markers, placed after a noun, and hence often called postpositions, these are often used in combination with a coverb. Predicate adjectives are normally used without a copular verb, to be, and can thus be regarded as a type of verb. As in many East Asian languages, classifiers or measure words are required when using numerals and sometimes other words such as demonstratives with nouns. There are many different classifiers in the language, and each countable noun generally has a particular classifier associated with it. Informally, however, it is often acceptable to use the general classifier GE, simplified Chinese, gay traditional Chinese, gay in place of other specific classifiers. Word formation In Chinese, the concept of words and the boundaries between them is not always transparent, and the Chinese script does not use spaces between words. Grammatically, some strings of characters behave as single words in some contexts, but are separable in others. Many English intransitive verbs are translated by verb plus noun compounds, such as tiawu, tiawu literally, to jump a dance, meaning to dance. Such items may be regarded as single lexical words, although the two parts can become separated by, for example, aspect markers, and in fact they generally behave grammatically as a verb plus an object. Sometimes the behavior of such compounds is anomalous, however, for instance guanzin, guan xin guan, to be concerned about. Behaves as an inseparable word when the perfective particle la is attached, although it is separable in the phrase guan shen mei shen, guan shen mi shen, guan shen mi shen literally. Concern what about? Meaning. To be concerned about what? Chinese morphemes, or minimum units of meaning, are mostly monosyllabic. Syllables, and thus in most cases morphemes, are represented as a rule by single characters. Some words consist of single syllables, but many words are formed by compounding two or more monosyllabic morphemes. These may be either free or bound, that is, they may or may not also be able to stand independently. Most two-syllable compound nouns have the head on the right, while in compound verbs the head is usually on the left. Loanwords from other languages may be polysyllabic, they are usually written using selected pre-existing characters that have the right phonetic values, for example, shafa. Sha fa sha sofa is written with the characters sha sha originally sand and fa 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 originally to become to issue native disyllabic morphemes such as jiju g spider have consonant alliteration Many monosyllabic words have alternative disyllabic forms with virtually the same meaning such as dasuan dasuan literally big garlic for suan Garlic. Many disyllabic nouns are produced by adding the suffix z, z originally meaning child, to a monosyllabic word or morpheme. There is a strong tendency for monosyllables to be avoided in certain positions, for example, a disyllabic verb will not normally be followed by a monosyllabic object. This may be connected with the preferred metrical structure of the language. Reduplication a common feature in Chinese is reduplication, where a syllable or word is repeated to produce a modified meaning. This can happen with classifiers, to produce a phrase meaning all. For example, zuo zuo shan, zuo zuo, all the mountains, 
Where ordinarily Zuo is the classifier used in a phrase denoting a specific number of mountains, syllables and some informal words denoting family relations, for example mama, ma ma ma, mother, didi, di, younger brother. Some adjectives, to add emphasis, hong hong, hong hong hong, so red, from hong, hong, red. This is most common with monosyllabic adjectives, but can also occur with some disyllabic ones, in some cases on the pattern shushufufu, shushufufu from shufu, shu, comfortable, and in others on the pattern bingliang bingliang, bingliang 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 from bingliang, bing, ice cool. Many verbs, to mark the delimitative aspect. To do something for a little bit. Or for general emphasis, see aspects section. Certain other single syllable words and morphemes, as in xing xing. Xing, distant, star, speck. From xing. Star. Chong chang. Chong, often. Prefixes. K K. Able. KK Cow Cow. Reliable. KK Zun Jing Zunjing. Respectable. Fan Fan. Anti. Fan Fan Kong Kong. Fan Anti Terror. Fan Fan Duo Tai Duo Tai. Fan duo anti abortion suffixes wa wa change guo ji guo ji wa wa guo ji internationalize e e wa wa e worsen xing xing ability and Quan Anquan, Xing Xing. Safety. Kui Kui, Xing Xing. Brittleness. Sentence structure. Chinese, like English, is classified as an SVO, subject verb object, language. Transitive verbs precede their objects in typical simple clauses, while the subject precedes the verb. For example, ta ta, he he, ju ju, literal, he drink alcohol. Translated, he drinks alcohol. Chinese can also be considered a topic prominent language. There is a strong preference for sentences that begin with the theme, usually given or old information, and end with the ream or new. Information. Certain modifications of the basic subject verb object order are permissible and may serve to achieve topic prominence. In particular, a direct or indirect object may be moved to the start of the clause to create topicalization. It is also possible for an object to be moved to a position in front of the verb for emphasis. Another type of sentence is what has been called an ergative structure, where the apparent subject of the verb can move to object position. The empty subject position is then often occupied by an expression of location. Compare locative inversion in English. This structure is typical of the verb you. There is are. In other contexts, the same verb means have. But it can also be used with many other verbs, generally denoting position, appearance or disappearance. An example, Yuan Z Yuan Z Li Li Ting J Tings Che Che Yuan Z Li Ting J Che Literal, Courtyard in Park Vehicle Translation, in the courtyard is parked a vehicle. Chinese is also to some degree a pro-drop or null subject language, meaning that the subject can be omitted from a clause if it can be inferred from the context. In the following example, the subject of the verbs for hike and camp is left to be inferred. It may be we, I, you, she, etc. Jin Tian Jin Tian, Pa Pa, Shan Shan, Ming Tian Ming Tian, Lu Lu, Ying Ying. Jin Tian Pa Shan, Ming Tian Lu Ying, literal, today climb mountain, tomorrow outdoors camp. 
Translated, today hike up mountains, tomorrow camp outdoors, in the next example the subject is omitted and the object is topicalized by being moved into subject position, to form a passive type sentence. For passive sentences with a marker such as bay bay, see the passive section. Fan fan, zuo zuo, hao hao, lila Fan zuo hao la literal, food make complete perfective aspect. Translation, the food has been made or the food is ready. Adverbs and adverbial phrases that modify the verb, typically come after the subject but before the verb, although other positions are sometimes possible, see adverbs and adverbials. For constructions that involve more than one verb or verb phrase in sequence, see serial verb constructions. For sentences consisting of more than one clause, see conjunctions. Objects some verbs can take both an indirect object and a direct object. Indirect normally precedes direct, as in English. Wo wo, gay gay, lila ta ta, lu lu, ben ben, shu shu. Wo gay la ta lu ben shu literal, I give perfective aspect, her six book classifier, books. Translation, I gave her six books, with many verbs, however, the indirect object may alternatively be preceded by prepositional gay, gay gay in that case it may either precede or follow the direct object, compare the similar use of to or for in English. In certain situations a direct object may be preceded by the accusative marker va. This generally denotes an action that results in a change of state in the object. For further details of this, see the va construction section. Such a ba phrase no longer occupies the normal direct object position, but moves in front of the verb. Compare Wo wo, da da, y y, lila pan z pan z Wo da y la pan z literal, i, verb form, break, perfective plate Translation, i broke a plate. Wo wo, ba ba, pan z pan z, da da, y y, lila Wo ba pan z da y la literal, i b a plate, verb form, break perfective. Translation, i b a plate broke, the meanings of the above two sentences are similar, but the one with ba may be considered to place more emphasis on what happened to the object. It may also indicate definiteness. The plate, rather than a plate. Certain other markers can be used in a similar way to ba, such as the formal jong, jong jong and colloquial na. Some verbs can apparently take two direct objects, which may be called an inner and an outer object. These cannot both follow the verb. Typically the outer object will be placed at the start of the sentence, topicalized, or introduced via the ba construction. For example, wo wo, ba ba, juzi juzi, bo bo, lila pi pi, Wo ba ju z bo la pi literal, I b a tangerine peeled skin. Translation, I peeled the tangerine, here pi. Skin is the inner object, and ju z ju tangerine is introduced via the ba construction as the outer object. Plurals Chinese nouns and other parts of speech are not generally marked for number, meaning that plural forms are mostly the same as the singular. However, there is a plural marker men, men men which has limited usage. It is used with personal pronouns, as in women, wo men wo, we, or us, derived from wo, I, me. It can be used with nouns representing humans, most commonly those with two syllables, like in penguin, Peng yu men peng yu friends from peng yu peng friend its use in such cases is optional it is never used when the noun has indefinite reference or when it is qualified by a numeral the demonstrative pronouns j j this and na that may be optionally pluralized by the addition of xie xie making jek si j xie j these in nak si not those Noun phrases The head noun of a noun phrase comes at the end of the phrase, this means that everything that modifies the noun comes before it. This includes attributive adjectives, determiners, quantifiers, possessives, and relative clauses. 
Chinese does not have articles as such, a noun may stand alone to represent what in English would be expressed as the or a n. However, the word yi one followed by the appropriate classifier may be used in some cases where English would have a or an. It is also possible, with many classifiers, to omit the yi and leave the classifier on its own at the start of the noun phrase. The demonstratives are j, j, this, and na, that. When used before a noun, these are often followed by an appropriate classifier for discussion of classifiers, see classifiers below and the article Chinese classifiers. However this use of classifiers is optional. When a noun is preceded by a numeral, or a demonstrative followed by a numeral, the use of a classifier or measure word is in most cases considered mandatory, this does not apply to nouns that function as measure words themselves, this includes many units of measurement and currency. The plural marker xie, some, several, also used to pluralize demonstratives, is used without a classifier. However g, g, some, several, how many. Takes a classifier, for adjectives in noun phrases, see the adjectives section. For noun phrases with pronouns rather than nouns as the head, see the pronouns section. Possessives are formed by adding did, did the same particle that is used after relative clauses and sometimes after adjectives, after the noun, noun phrase or pronoun that denotes the possessor. Relative clauses Chinese relative clauses, like other noun modifiers, precede the noun they modify. Like possessives and some adjectives, they are marked with the final particle de. A free relative clause is produced if the modified noun following the de is omitted. A relative clause usually comes after any determiner phrase, such as a numeral and classifier. For emphasis, it may come before the determiner phrase, there is usually no relative pronoun in the relative clause. Instead, a gap is left in subject or object position as appropriate. If there are two gaps, the additional gap being created by pro-dropping, ambiguity may arise. For example, kaida kaida may mean those who eat or that which is eaten. When used alone, it usually means things to eat. If the relative item is governed by a preposition in the relative clause, then it is denoted by a pronoun, e.g. t ta, t for him, to explain, for whom. Otherwise the whole prepositional phrase is omitted, the preposition then being implicitly understood. For example sentences, see relative clause Mandarin. Classifiers Chinese nouns require classifiers called liangqi, liang si liang, measure words, in order to be counted. That is, when specifying the amount of a countable noun, a classifier must be inserted which agrees with the noun. Hence one must say liang tu niu, liang tu niu liang tu, two head of cattle, four, two cows, with two being the measure word or classifier. This phenomenon is common in East Asian languages. In English, some words, as in the cited example of cattle, are often paired with a noun used much like the Chinese measure word bottle in two bottles of wine or piece in three pieces of paper are further examples. However, certain nouns representing units of measurement, time, or currency are themselves classifiers. These can therefore be counted directly. Classifiers are generally associated with certain groups of nouns related by meaning, such as tiao, tiao, tiao for long, thin objects or animals, like ropes, snakes or fish, ba, ba for objects with handles, like knives or umbrellas, or zhong, zhong, zhong for flat sheet-like objects like photographs, or fur. While there are dozens of classifiers, which must be memorized individually for each noun, a majority of words use the general classifier gay. Gay. Many nouns that are associated with other classifiers can also use gay if the speaker chooses. The classifiers for many nouns appear arbitrary. The word josi, jo, table, is a jong noun, probably because a table top is sheet-like, while yizi, yi, chair, is a ba noun, likely because a chair is moved by lifting something like a handle. 
Dengzi, Dengzi another word for chair or stool, is a gay noun. Classifiers are also used optionally after demonstratives, and in certain other situations. See the noun phrases section, and the article Chinese classifier. Numerals Pronouns The Chinese personal pronouns are wo, I, me, ni, 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 you, and ta, 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 he, him, she, her, it. Plurals are formed by adding men, 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 women, wo, men, wo, we, us, naiman, ni, men, ni, you, taiman, ta, men, ta, men, ta, men, ta, men, ta, men, ta, they, them. There is also nin, nin a formal, polite word for singular. You. The alternative. Inclusive. Word for. We, us. Zan, zan or za, n, men, zan men, zan men, referring specifically to the two people. You and I is not widely used. The third person pronouns are not often used for inanimates, with demonstratives used instead. Possessives are formed with did, de, de such as wode, wo, my, mine, women, wo men, de wo men, r, s, etc. The de may be omitted in phrases denoting inalienable possession, such as wo mama, wo mama, wo ma, my mom. The demonstrative pronouns are j, j, this, colloquially pronounced ze, and na, that, colloquially pronounced ne. They are optionally pluralized by the addition of xie. There is a reflexive pronoun ziji, zg meaning oneself, myself, etc., which can stand alone as an object or a possessive, or may follow a personal pronoun for emphasis. The reciprocal pronoun, each other can be translated from bichi, by si usually in adverb position. An alternative is hushong, who, mutually. Adjectives Adjectives can be used attributively, before a noun. The relative marker de, de may be added after the adjective, but this is not always required. Black horse may be either hey ma, hey ma, hey ma or hey de ma. Hey de ma, hey de. When multiple adjectives are used, the order quality, size, shape, color is followed, although this is not necessary when each adjective is made into a separate phrase with the addition of de. Gradable adjectives can be modified by words meaning very, etc. Such modifying adverbs normally precede the adjective, although some, such as jile, jila ji, extremely, come after it. When adjectives co-occur with classifiers, they normally follow the classifier. However, with most common classifiers, when the number is 1, it is also possible to place adjectives like big and small before the classifier for emphasis. For example yi da ji e zigwe, yi da ge shi gua yi da ge shi, one big classifier, watermelon. Adjectives can also be used predicatively. In this case they behave more like verbs, there is no need for a copular verb in sentences like He is happy. In Chinese, one may say simply ta gao xing, ta gao xing ta gao, he happy, where the adjective may be interpreted as a verb meaning is happy. In such sentences it is common for the adjective to be modified by a word meaning very, or the like, in fact the word hen, very is often used in such cases with gradable adjectives, even without carrying the meaning of very. It is nonetheless possible for a copula to be used in such sentences, to emphasize the adjective. In the phrase ta shi gao xing le, ta shi gao xing le, ta shi gao xing, he is now truly happy. She is the copula meaning is, and le is the inceptive marker discussed later. This is similar to the cleft sentence construction. Sentences can also be formed in which an adjective followed by de, de stands as the complement of the copula. Adverbs and adverbials Adverbs and adverbial phrases normally come in a position before the verb, but after the subject of the verb. In sentences with auxiliary verbs, the adverb usually precedes the auxiliary verb as well as the main verb. Some adverbs of time and attitude. Every day perhaps, etc., may be moved to the start of the clause, to modify the clause as a whole. 
However, some adverbs cannot be moved in this way. These include three words for often. Chong, 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 chang, chong, chong, and jing, chang, jing, chong, jing, chong, do. All. Ju. Then. In you. Again. Adverbs of manner can be formed from adjectives using the clitic de. It is generally possible to move these adverbs to the start of the clause, although in some cases this may sound awkward, unless there is a qualifier such as hen, very, and a pause after the adverb. Some verbs take a prepositional phrase following the verb and its direct object. These are generally obligatory constituents, such that the sentence would not make sense if they were omitted. For example, Fang Fang, Ben Ben, Shu Shu, Zai Zai, Zhou Zi Zhou Zi, Shang Shang, Fang Ben Shu Zai Zhou Zi Shang. Put the book on the tablet. There are also certain adverbial stative complements which follow the verb. The character de, de followed by an adjective functions the same as the phrase li in English, turning the adjective into an adverb. The second is haola, how complete. It is not generally possible for a single verb to be followed by both an object and an adverbial complement of this type, although there are exceptions in cases where the complement expresses duration, frequency or goal. To express both, the verb may be repeated in a special kind of serial verb construction, the first instance taking an object, the second taking the complement. Aspect markers can then appear only on the second instance of the verb. The typical Chinese word order, XVO, where an oblique complement such as a locative prepositional phrase precedes the verb, while a direct object comes after the verb, is very rare cross-linguistically, in fact, it is only in varieties of Chinese that this is attested as the typical ordering. Locative phrases expressions of location in Chinese may include a preposition, placed before the noun, a postposition, placed after the noun, both preposition and postposition, or neither. Chinese prepositions are commonly known as coverbs, see the coverbs section. The postpositions, which include shang, shang up, on, sha, sha down, under, li, li, li in, within, nay, nay inside, and y, y outside, may also be called locative particles. In the following examples locative phrases are formed from a noun plus a locative particle, zhou zi zhou zi, shang shang, literal, table on translation, on the table fang zi, fang zi, li li, fang zi li literal, house in translation, in the house the most common preposition of location is zai, zai at, on, in. With certain nouns that inherently denote a specific location, including nearly all place names, a locative phrase can be formed with zai together with the noun, zai zai, mei guo mei guo, zai mei guo literal and translation. In America, however, other types of nouns still require a locative particle as a postposition in addition to zai, zai zai, bao ji bao ji, shang shang, zai bao ji shang literal. In newspaper on translation, in the newspaper if a noun is modified so as to denote a specific location, as in this object. Object, then it may form locative phrases without any locative particle. Some nouns which can be understood to refer to a specific place, like jia, jia home, and zixiao, zixiao, zixiao school, may optionally omit the locative particle. Words like shangmian, shangmian top, can function as specific location nouns, like in zai shangmian, zai shangmian on top, but can also take the role of locative particle, not necessarily with analogous meaning. The phrase Zai Bao Ji Shang Mian, Zai Bao Ji Shang Mian, Zai Bao Ji Shang Mian in newspaper top can mean either in the newspaper or on the newspaper. In certain circumstances, Zai can be omitted from the locative expression. Grammatically, a noun or noun phrase followed by a locative particle is still a noun phrase. For instance, Josie Shang can be regarded as short for Josie Shang Mian, meaning something like the table's top. Consequently, the locative expression without zai can be used in places where a noun phrase would be expected, for instance, as a modifier of another noun using de, de or as the object of a different preposition, such as kong. From. The version with zai, on the other hand, plays an adverbial role. However, zai is usually omitted when the locative expression begins a sentence with the ergative structure, where the expression, though having an adverbial function, can be seen as filling the subject or noun role in the sentence. For examples, see sentence structure section. The word zai, zai like certain other prepositions or coverbs, can also be used as a verb. A locative expression can therefore appear as a predicate without the need for any additional copula. For example, he is at school. Ta zai zai xiao, ta zai zai xiao, ta zai zai xiao, literally. 
He at school. Comparatives and superlatives Comparative sentences are commonly expressed simply by inserting the standard of comparison, preceded by by, than. The adjective itself is not modified. The by phrase is an adverbial, and has a fixed position before the verb. See also the section on negation. If there is no standard of comparison, i.e., a than phrase, then the adjective can be marked as comparative by a preceding adverb bijao, bai jiao bai jiao or jiao, jiao jiao both meaning more. Similarly, superlatives can be expressed using the adverb zui, most, which precedes a predicate verb or adjective. Adverbial phrases meaning like someone, something, or is someone, something can be formed using gen, gen tong, tong or shang, shang before the noun phrase, and yi yang, yi yang, yi yang or na yang, na yang, na yang after it, the construction you, 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 you can be translated into statements of the type, the more, the more. Copula the Chinese copular verb is xi. This is the equivalent of English. To be. And all its forms. Am. Is. Are. Was. Were. Etc. However, xi is normally only used when its complement is a noun or noun phrase. As noted above, predicate adjectives function as verbs themselves, as does the locative preposition zai, zai so in sentences where the predicate is an adjectival or locative phrase, she is not required. For another use of she, see she. De construction in the section on cleft sentences. The English existential phrase, there is, there are etc., is translated using the verb you, you which is otherwise used to denote possession. Aspects Chinese does not have grammatical markers of tense. The time at which action is conceived is taking place past, present, future can be indicated by expressions of time. Yesterday. Now. Etc., or may simply be inferred from the context. However, Chinese does have markers of aspect, which is a feature of grammar that gives information about the temporal flow of events. There are two aspect markers that are especially commonly used with past events, the perfective aspect la, la and the experiential guo. guo. Some authors, however, do not regard guo j as markers of aspect. Both la and guo immediately follow the verb. There is also a sentence final particle la, which serves a somewhat different purpose. The perfective la presents the viewpoint of an event in its entirety. It is sometimes considered to be a past tense marker, although it can also be used with future events, given appropriate context. Some examples of its use. Wo wo, dang dang, la la, bing bing. Wo dang la bing literal, I work la soldier. Translation, I became a soldier. Using la, la shows this event that has taken place or took place at a particular time. Ta ta, con con, la la, san san, chong chong, chu sai chu sai. Ta con la san chong chu sai, literal, he watch la three, sports classifier, ball games. Translation, he watched three ball games. This format of la, la is usually used in a time-delimited context such as today or last week. The above may be compared with the following examples with guo, and with the examples with sentence final la given under particles. The experiential guo describes to a subject the property of having experienced the event. Wo wo, dang dang, guo guo, bing bing. Wo dang guo bing literal, I work guo soldier. Translation, I once became a soldier. This also implies that the speaker no longer is a soldier. Ta ta, con con, guo guo, san san, chong chong, chu sai chu sai. 
Ta Kan Guo San Chong Chu Sai Literal, He Watch Guo 3, Sports Classifier, Ballgames. Translation, He has watched three ballgames up to now. There are also two imperfective aspect markers, Zheng Zai, Zheng Zai or Zai, Zai and J, J J, which denote ongoing actions or states. Zheng Zai and Zai precede the verb, and are usually used for ongoing actions or dynamic events, they may be translated as be in the process of ain or be in the middle of ain. J follows the verb, and is used mostly for static situations. Wo wo, jung jung, zai zai, gua gua, wa wa. Wo jung zai gua wa literal, I, in middle of, hang pictures. Translation, I'm hanging pictures up. Chang chang, shang shang, gua gua, j j, yi yi, fu fu, wa wa. Chang shang gua j yi fu wa literal, wall on hang, ongoing, one, picture classifier picture. Translation, a picture is hanging on the wall, both markers may occur in the same clause, however. For example, ta jeng zai da j dian wa. He is in the middle of telephoning someone. Ta jung zai da j dian wa ta jung zai da j dian wa. He, in middle of verb form, ongoing, telephone. The delimitative aspect denotes an action that goes on only for some time. Doing something, a little bit. This can be expressed by reduplication of a monosyllabic verb, like the verb zo walk, in the following sentence. Wo wo, dao dao, gong yuan, gong yan, zo zo, zo zo. Wo dao gong yuan, zo zo, literal, I to park walk walk. Translation, I'm going for a walk in the park. An alternative construction is reduplication with insertion of one. Yi yi. For example, zo yi zo, zo yi zo, which might be translated as walk a little walk. A further possibility is reduplication followed by con to see. This emphasizes the testing nature of the action. If the verb has an object, con follows the object. Some compound verbs, such as restrictive resultative and coordinate compounds, can also be reduplicated on the pattern taolin taolin, dao lun dao lun dao lun dao lun from the verb taolin, dao lun dao lun meaning discuss. Other compounds may be reduplicated, but for general emphasis rather than delimitative aspect. In compounds that are verb object combinations, like tiao wu, tiao to jump a dance, dance. A delimitative aspect can be marked by reduplicating the first syllable, creating tiao tiao wu tiao tiao wu which may be followed with con. Passive As mentioned above, the fact that a verb is intended to be understood in the passive voice is not always marked in Chinese. However, it may be marked using the passive marker bei bei, followed by the agent, though bei may appear alone, if the agent is not to be specified. Certain causative markers can replace bei, such as those mentioned in the other cases section, gay, jiao and rang. Of these causative markers, only gay can appear alone without a specified agent. The construction with a passive marker is normally used only when there is a sense of misfortune or adversity. The passive marker and agent occupy the typical adverbial position before the verb. See the negation section for more. Some examples Wo men women, bei bei, ta ta, ma ma, lila. Wo men bei ta ma la literal, we by him scolded perfective aspect. Translation, we were scolded by him. Ta ta, bei bei, wo wo, da da, lila, yi yi, dun dun. Ta bei wo da la yi dun literal, he by me beaten perfective aspect, one, event classifier. Translation, he was beaten up by me once. Negation The most commonly used negating element is bu bu pronounced with second tone when followed by a fourth tone. This can be placed before a verb, preposition or adverb to negate it. For example, I don't eat chicken. Wo bu kai ji wo bu kai ji wo bu kai ji. I not eat chicken. For the double verb negative construction with bu, see complement of result, below. However, the verb you, you which can mean either possession, or 
there is R in existential clauses is negated using mai, mai mai to produce mai you, mai you mai not have. For negation of a verb intended to denote a completed event, mai or mai you is used instead of bu, bu and the aspect marker la, la is then omitted. Also, mai you is used to negate verbs that take the aspect marker guo, guo guo in this case the aspect marker is not omitted. In cover constructions, the negator may come before the cover preposition, or before the full verb, the latter being more emphatic. In constructions with a passive marker, the negator precedes that marker. Similarly, in comparative constructions, the negator precedes the by phrase unless the verb is further qualified by jeng. Even more. In which case the negator may follow the jeng to produce the meaning. Even less. The negator by a by a precedes the verb in negative commands and negative requests, such as in phrases meaning don't. Please don't. The negator way, way means not yet. Other items used as negating elements in certain compound words include wu, 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 and fei. A double negative makes a positive, as in sentences like wo bu shi bu zi wan ta, wo bu shi bu shi huan ta, wo bu shi bu shi huan. It's not that I don't like her. For this use of she, she, see the cleft sentences section. Questions. In WH questions in Chinese, the question word is not fronted. Instead, it stays in the position in the sentence that would be occupied by the item being asked about. For example, What did you say? is phrased as ni shuo she n mi ni shuo shen mi ni shuo shen mi literally. You say what? The word shen mei, shen mi shen, what? Or which remains in the object position after the verb. Other interrogative words include Who? Shui, Shaya. Shaya, what? Shenmei, Shenmi, Shenmi, Sha, Sha used informally. Where? Nar, Na, Er, Na, Er, Nali. Nali, Na, when? Shenmei, Shi, Ho, U, Shenmi, Shi, Hu, Shenmi, Shi, Hu, Eshi. Hei, Shi, Hei, which? Na. Na when used to mean which ones? Na is used with a classifier and noun, or with xie, xie and noun. The noun may be omitted if understood through context. Why? Why she, n, mi, wei shen mi, wei shen mi gan ma. Gan ma gan. How many? Duo shao. Duo shao when the number is quite small, g, g, g is used, followed by a classifier. How? Zenmi, Yang, Zenmi Yang, Zenmi Yang, Rue, Ruhe disjunctive questions can be made using the word Heishi, Hai Shi, Hai Shi between the options, like English. Or. This differs from the word for. Or. In statements, which is Huoja. Huo, yes, no questions can be formed using the sentence final particle ma, ma ma with word order otherwise the same as in a statement. For example, ni kai ji ma. Ni kai ji ma, ni kai ji ma. You eat chicken ma. Do you eat chicken? An alternative is the a not a construction, using phrases like kai bu kai, chi bu, eat or not eat. With two syllable verbs, sometimes only the first syllable is repeated, chi bu zi wan, chi bu shi huan, chi bu shi, like or not like. From zi wan, chi huan, chi, like. It is also possible to use the a not a construction with prepositions, coverbs, and phrases headed by them, as with full verbs. The negator mai, mai mai can be used rather than bu in the a not a construction when referring to a completed event, but if it occurs at the end of the sentence, i.e. the repetition is omitted, the full form mai yu, mai yu mai yu must appear for answering yes no questions. Chinese has words that may be used like the English. Yes. And no, dewey, 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 or she did she did for yes, boo, boo for no, but these are not often used for this purpose. It is more common to repeat the verb or verb phrase or entire sentence, negating it if applicable. Imperatives 
Second person imperative sentences are formed in the same way as statements, but like in English, the subject, you, is often omitted. Orders may be softened by preceding them with an element such as ching, to ask, in this use equivalent to English, please. See particles for more. The sentence final particle ba, ba can be used to form first person imperatives, equivalent to let's. Serial verb constructions Chinese makes frequent use of serial verb constructions, or verb stacking, where two or more verbs or verb phrases are concatenated together. This frequently involves either verbal complements appearing after the main verb, or cover phrases appearing before the main verb, but other variations of the construction occur as well. Auxiliaries A main verb may be preceded by an auxiliary verb, as in English. Chinese auxiliaries include nang and nanggu, nang and nanggo, nang can, wei, wei know how to, kiyi, ke may, gan, dare, ken, be willing to, ying gai, ying gai ying should, bi shu, bai shu bai must, etc. The auxiliary normally follows an adverb, if present. In shortened sentences an auxiliary may be used without a main verb, analogously to English sentences such as I can. Verbal complements The active verb of a sentence may be suffixed with a second verb, which usually indicates either the result of the first action, or the direction in which it took the subject. When such information is applicable, it is generally considered mandatory. The phenomenon is sometimes called double verbs. Complement of result A complement of result, or resultative complement, jie guo bu yu, jie guo bu yu, jie guo bu yu, is a verbal suffix which indicates the outcome, or possible outcome, of the action indicated by the main verb. In the following examples, the main verb is ting, ting, to listen, and the complement of result is dong, to understand, to know. Ting ting, dong dong. Ting dong literal, here understand. Translation, to understand something you hear since they indicate an absolute result. Such double verbs necessarily represent a completed action, and are thus negated using ma'i. Ma'i 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 ma'i, ting ting, dong dong. Ma'i ting dong literal, not here understand. Translation, to have not understood something you hearth infixed it, day is placed between the double verbs to indicate possibility or ability. This is not possible with restrictive, resultative compounds such as jisheng, jie sheng literally, reduce save, meaning, to save, economize. Ting ting, day de dong dong. Ting de dong literal, here, possible, able, understand, Translation, to be able to understand something you hear. This is equivalent in meaning to neng ting dong, neng ting dong, neng ting dong using the auxiliary neng, neng equivalent to may or can. To negate the above construction, de, de is replaced by bu. Bu ting ting, bu bu, dong dong. Ting bu dong literal, here, impossible, unable, understand. Translation, to be unable to understand something you hear with some verbs, the addition of bu and a particular complement of result is the standard method of negation. In many cases the complement is liao, represented by the same character as the perfective or modal particle le. This verb means, to finish, but when used as a complement for negation purposes it may merely indicate inability. For example, shou bu liao, shou bu, to be unable to tolerate. The complement of result is a highly productive and frequently used construction. Sometimes it develops into idiomatic phrases, as in e sila, e sila, e sila literally, hungry until die already, meaning to be starving, and chi sila, chi sila, chi sila literally, mad until die already, meaning to be extremely angry. The phrases for hatred 
Kan bu chi kanbuki. Excuse me. Dui bu chi dui bu chi dubaki, and too expensive to buy. My bu chi my bu chi my baki all use the character chi to rise up as a complement of result, but their meanings are not obviously related to that meaning. This is partially the result of metaphorical construction, where kanbuki kan bu chi literally means to be unable to look up to. And dubaki, dui bu chi dui bu chi means to be unable to face someone. Some more examples of resultative complements, used in complete sentences. Ta ta ba ba pan zi pan zi da da po po lila ta ba pan zi da po la literal, he object classifier plate hit break perfect aspect. Translation, he hit, dropped the plate, and it broke, double verb construction where the second verb, break, is a suffix to the first, and indicates what happens to the object as a result of the action. J J I Bu Bu Dian Ying Dian Ying Wo Wo Kan Kan Bu Bu Dong Dong J Bu Dian Ying Wo Kan Bu Dong Literal, this movie I look, impossible, unable, understand. Translation, I can't understand this movie even though I watched it. Another double verb where the second verb, understand, suffixes the first and clarifies the possibility and success of the relevant action. Complement of direction A complement of direction, or directional complement, ku shang bu yu, ku shang bu yu, ku shang bu yu, indicates the direction of an action involving movement. The simplest directional complements are ku, to go, and lie, lie, to come, which may be added after a verb to indicate movement away from or towards the speaker, respectively. These may form compounds with other verbs that further specify the direction, such as shang ku, shang, to go up, guo lai, guo lai guo, to come over, which may then be added to another verb, such as zo, to walk, as in zo guo ku, zo guo ku zo guo, to walk over. Another example, in a whole sentence, ta ta, zo zo, shang shang, lai lai, lila, Ta zo shang li la literal, he walk up come perfect aspect. Translation, he walked up towards me. The directional suffixes indicate up and towards. If the preceding verb has an object, the object may be placed either before or after the directional complements, or even between two directional complements, provided the second of these is not ku, ku the structure with inserted de or bu is not normally used with this type of double verb. There are exceptions, such as to be unable to get out of bed, qi bu lai chuang, qi bu lai chuang, qi bu lai chuang or qi chuang bu lai, qi chuang bu lai, qi chuang bu lai. Coverbs Chinese has a class of words, called coverbs, which in some respects resemble both verbs and prepositions. They appear with a following object, or complement, and generally denote relationships that would be expressed by prepositions, or postpositions, in other languages. However, they are often considered to be lexically verbs, and some of them can also function as full verbs. When a coverb phrase appears in a sentence together with a main verb phrase, the result is essentially a type of serial verb construction. The coverb phrase, being an adverbial, precedes the main verb in most cases. For instance, Wo wo, bang bang, ni ni, jiao jiao, ta ta, wo bang ni jiao ta literal, I help you find him. Translation, I will find him for you, here the main verb is jiao. Find and bang, bang, bang is a cover. Here bang corresponds to the English preposition. For. Even though in other contexts it might be used as a full verb meaning. Help. Wo wo, zuo zuo, fei ji fei ji, kong kong, shanghai shanghai, dao dao, beijing beijing, ku ku. Wo zuo fei ji kong shanghai dao beijing ku literal, I sit aeroplane from shanghai arrive beijing go. Translation, I'll go from Shanghai to Beijing by plane, here there are three coverbs, Zuo, by, Kong, Kong, from, and Dao, to. The words Zuo and Dao can also be verbs, meaning, 
sit and arrive at, respectively. However, Kong is not normally used as a full verb. A very common coverb that can also be used as a main verb is zai, zai as described in the locative phrases section. Another example is gate gay which as a verb means give. As a preposition, gay may mean for or to. When marking an indirect object or in certain other expressions, such as wo gay ni da dianwa for. I'll give you a telephone call. Wo gay ni da dian wa wo gay ni da dian wa. I to you strike telephone. Because coverbs essentially function as prepositions, they can also be referred to simply as prepositions. In Chinese they are called jia si, jia si jia si a term which generally corresponds to preposition, or more generally, ad position. The situation is complicated somewhat by the fact that location markers, which also have meanings similar to those of certain English prepositions, are often called postpositions. Coverbs normally cannot take aspect markers, although some of them form fixed compounds together with such markers, such as genzin, gen, with plus, aspect marker, ants, and, according to, yans, yan, long, and while, way, for. Other cases Serial verb constructions can also consist of two consecutive verb phrases with parallel meaning, such as he cafe con bao. Drink coffee and read the paper. He cafe con bao, he cafe con bao. Drink coffee read paper. Each verb may independently be negated or given the la aspect marker. If both verbs would have the same object, it is omitted the second time. Consecutive verb phrases may also be used to indicate consecutive events. Use of the la aspect marker with the first verb may imply that this is the main verb of the sentence, the second verb phrase merely indicating the purpose. Use of this la with the second verb changes this emphasis, and may require a sentence final la particle in addition. On the other hand, the progressive aspect marker xi, xi may be applied to the first verb, but not normally the second alone. The word ku, go. Or lie, lie, come, may be inserted between the two verb phrases, meaning, in order to. For constructions with consecutive verb phrases containing the same verb, see under adverbs. For immediate repetition of a verb, see reduplication and aspects. Another case is the causative or pivotal construction. Here the object of one verb also serves as the subject of the following verb. The first verb may be something like gay, allow, or give. In other contexts, rang, rang, let, jiao, order, or call, or she, make, compel, ching, ching, invite, or ling, command. Some of these cannot take an aspect marker such as le when used in this construction, like ling, rang, she. Sentences of this type often parallel the equivalent English pattern, except that English may insert the infinitive marker. 2. In the following example the construction is used twice. Ta-ta, yao-yao, wo-wo, ching-ching, ta-ta, he-he, pai-ju, pilyu. Ta-yao-wo-ching, ta-he, pai-ju, literal, he want me invite him drink beer. Translation, he wants me to treat him to beer. Particles Chinese has a number of sentence final particles, these are weak syllables, spoken with neutral tone, and placed at the end of the sentence to which they refer. They are often called modal particles or yukizuchi, yuchizu si, yuchizu si as they serve chiefly to express grammatical mood, or how the sentence relates to reality and or intent. They include Ma, 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 which changes a statement into a yes no question. Nay, nay, which expresses surprise, or produces a question. With expectation. Ba, ba, which serves as a tag question, e.g., don't you think so? produces a suggestion, e.g., let's. or lessens certainty of a decision. A, a which reduces forcefulness, particularly of an order or question. 
It can also be used to add positive connotation to certain phrases or inject uncertainty when responding to a question. O, 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 which signals a friendly warning. J, 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 which marks the inchoative aspect, or need for change of state, in imperative sentences. Compare the imperfective aspect marker J in the section above. L, L, which marks a currently relevant state. This precedes any other sentence final particles, and can combine with a, a to produce la, la and with o, o, o to produce lu, lu, luo. This sentence final la, la should be distinguished from the verb suffix la, la discussed in the aspects section. Whereas the sentence final particle is sometimes described as an inceptive or as a marker of perfect aspect, the verb suffix is described as a marker of perfective aspect. Some examples of its use Wo wo, mai mai, qian qian, lila. Woma Ichian La literal, I know money perfect aspect. Translation, I have no money now or I've gone broke. Wo wo, dang dang, bing bing, lila. Wo dang bing la literal, I work soldier perfect aspect. Translation, I have become a soldier. The position of la in this example emphasizes his present status as a soldier, rather than the event of becoming. Compare with the post-verbal la example given in the aspects section, wo dang la bing. Ta ta, kan kan, san san, chong chong, chu sai chu sai, la la ta kan san chong chu sai la literal, he watched three, sports classifier, ballgames perfect aspect. Translation, he, has watched three ballgames. Compared with the post-verbal la and guo examples, this places the focus on the number three, and does not specify whether he is going to continue watching more games. The two uses of la may in fact be traced back to two entirely different words. The fact that they are now written the same way in Mandarin can cause ambiguity, particularly when the verb is not followed by an object. Consider the following sentence, ma ma mama, lai lai, lila, ma ma lai la literal and translation, mom come la, this la might be interpreted as either the suffixal perfective marker or the sentence final perfect marker. In the former case it might mean, mother has come, as in she has just arrived at the door, while in the latter it might mean, mother is coming, and the speaker want to inform others of this fact. It is even possible for the two kinds of la to co-occur, ta ta chi kai, lila fan fan, lila ta kai fan la literal, he eat perfective aspect, food, perfect aspect, translation, he has eaten. Without the first la, the sentence could again mean, he has eaten, or it could mean, he wants to eat now. Without the final la the sentence would be ungrammatical without appropriate context, as perfective la cannot appear in a semantically unbounded sentence. Cleft sentences There is a construction in Chinese known as the shi, the construction, which produces what may be called cleft sentences. The copula shi, shi is placed before the element of the sentence which is to be emphasized, and the optional possessive particle de, de is placed at the end of the sentence. For example, ta ta, shi shi, zuo tian zuo shen, mai mai, kai kai, de de, ta shi zuo tian mai kai de literal, he shi yesterday buy food de. Translation, it was yesterday that he bought food, if an object following the verb, is to be emphasized in this construction, the she precedes the object, and the de comes after the verb and before the she. Ta ta, zuo tian zuo shen, mai mai, de de, shi shi, kai kai, ta zuo tian mai de shi kai literal, he yesterday buy de shi vegetable. Translation, what he bought yesterday was vegetable, sentences with similar meaning can be produced using relative clauses. For example, yesterday was the time he bought food, can be said zuoshin shi ta mai kai de shi jin, zuo tian shi ta mai kai de shi jian, zuo tian shi ta mai kai de shi jian literally, yesterday is he buy food de time. These may be called pseudo-cleft sentences. Conjunctions Chinese has various conjunctions, lian si lian si lianqi, such as hei, hei and dan shi, dan shi but huoja, huoje or, etc. However Chinese quite often uses no conjunction where English would have and. Two or more nouns may be joined together by the conjunctions hei and or huo or. For example dao hei cha, dao hei knife and fork, go huo mao, go huo dog or cat. Certain adverbs are often used as correlative conjunctions, where correlating words appear in each of the linked clauses, such as budin or key. Budan air not only 
but also Swirin Heishi Sway ran high, she sway ran high, although still Yinwei Suoyi Yinwei Suoyi Yinwei Suo because therefore such connectors may appear at the start of a clause or before the verb phrase, similarly, words like jiren, ji, since, in response to, ruguo, ruguo or jaru, ja, if, jiao, ji, provided that, correlate with an adverb ju, then, or yi, also, in the main clause, to form conditional sentences. In some cases, the same word may be repeated when connecting items, these include you, 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 both, and, yibian, 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 yi, while, in you, you, you the more the more conjunctions of time such as when may be translated with a construction that corresponds to something like at the time plus relative clause where as usual the chinese relative clause comes before the noun time in this case for example Dang dang, wo wo, wei wei, jia jia, da da, shi hu shi ho u. Dang wo wei jia da shi hu literal, at I return home to time. Translation, when I return, ed, home. Variants include dang. Yi qian. Dang yi qian dang yi, before. In dang. Yi ho u. Dang yi hu dang yi after, which do not use the relative marker de. In all of these cases, the initial dang may be replaced by zai, zai or may be omitted. There are also similar constructions for conditionals, ruguo, jaru, jiao, dewa, ruguo, jaru, jiao, de. if, then, where wa, wa, wa literally means. Narrative story. See also Classical Chinese grammar, Cantonese grammar. Notes References Bibliography Further reading External links A summary of Chinese grammar